Hey guys and welcome to today's video. We will talk about a variety of cell signaling possibilities, cell communication and about different cell signaling types. Here we start off with paracrine signaling. The blue cell can release growth factors for example and all the surrounded cells here with the expression of specific receptors can now bind this ligand. This can then activate intracellular signaling for example, some downstream effects like gene transcription activation. However, cells in the near surrounding with no expression of this receptor, they cannot be targeted for communication. It is important to mention here that for paracrine signaling, the cells have to be in rather close range. The signaling molecules released by the donor cell here, they can't travel over a long distance. An example for paracrine signaling might be the expression of VEGF, so the vascular endothelial growth factor. They are secreted and the surrounding cells with the specific receptors can then initiate angiogenesis. Another signaling type here is the autocrine signaling. So in this case here, the cell can secrete a messenger, which can be a hormone for example, and this one can bind to its own receptors on the surface. In that case, the cell has expressed the fitting receptor for its own secreted signaling molecule. We can find many good examples for autocrine signaling when we have a look into tumor cells. Most tumor cells show to be autonomous in terms of cell proliferation. Many of them show to develop independency of their microenvironment. This is why autocrine signaling is found a lot in tumor cells. Another form of cell communication is juxtacrine signaling. In this case, it's all dependent on contact. So in this case, we don't have the secretion of a signaling molecule. Instead, we have a membrane-bound signaling molecule on our donor cell. The juxtacrine signaling is contact dependent. So when the cells get into close proximity and the membrane-bound signaling molecule will interact with the receptor on the target cell, cell signaling can be triggered. A very famous example for juxtacrine signaling is the notch delta pathway. So two adjacent cells where one has expressed the delta molecule which is the membrane bound ligand and the other cell has expressed the notch receptors. Notch delta signaling is involved in embryogenesis. It is very important for cell differentiation and can easily determine cell fate dependent on which one of these parts, the receptor or the ligand, is expressed. When cells have to communicate but are in very large distance, so paracrine signaling is not possible because of limited diffusion, let's make it more specific, we take different organs. The brain, for example, can secrete a hormone but the target site, so the receptors, are located in the liver tissue. So these are two organs where we have quite some range in between, right? In this case, there is one type of signaling which is called endocrine signaling, where the donor cell will now secrete their signaling molecules into the circulatory system and they will travel in the bloodstream. They can diffuse through the membranes once they reach their specific target cell to trigger intracellular signaling pathways. The secretion of hormones is a very good example here. Hormone synthesis takes place in glands. One example might be insulin. Insulin is produced in the pancreas and from there secreted into the bloodstream. The endocrine system helps insulin to travel over a long distance and reach muscle cells for example where insulin can bind to insulin receptors that support the uptake of sugars in the tissue. The last type of signaling I want to show you is synaptic signaling. In this case we are talking about neurons and neurotransmitters. The upper part here is the terminal axon. It's also called the presynaptic neuron. The part on the other side is called the postsynaptic neuron and in between we have the synaptic cleft. Our presynaptic neuron has neurotransmitters. So these neurotransmitters here are released into the synapse. So in this case, the neurotransmitter can bind to the receptors expressed on the postsynaptic neuron and this binding of the neurotransmitters can open and close channels. Open channels can lead to ion flows, such as the rapid uptake of calcium. 
Overall, a cell has different ways to communicate. And cellular communication is very complex. There is a whole variety. A cell can communicate in their local environment. It can also initiate its own cellular signaling pathway. When cellular communication takes place over a long distance, the endocrine signaling is a possibility using the circulatory system as a highway. There is contact dependent signaling. And when we talk about neurons, there is also synaptic signaling where neurotransmitters play a role, which are released and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron to initiate signal transduction. And with that, I thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you and see you next time.